Hello, welcome to my channel. The main rule for the quilting is that there are no rules. You will learn, you will uh, watch others and you will find the methods and ways of quilting that works for you. And that's the most important thing because you need to find uh, what works for you to be able to enjoy the process. What you will see is my process of working with different materials and uh, different designs. And I hope some of those tips and tricks will help you in your own journey. Hi, welcome to Polar Projects and um, Polar Quilting. Now, I'm starting today a new project which I was very excited um, for a while now to start. So, in my previous video, video one of the videos you saw, you saw I've made some of those wonky um, log cabins. And what I want to make out of it is a quilted jacket. So I saw a few videos where people using either uh, sweatshirts or they're using uh, normal uh, patterns from, um, you know, companies ready-made. So uh, sweatshirt is yes, a good idea, but I think for me they were a little bit too short. And also, you know, we are in the lockdown. I don't want to use new sweatshirt and I cannot go and buy secondhand ones. So that, that goes away. Now, I do use a lot of uh, men but button-up shirts for my project, so I thought I've got one old shirt in a big size and I will try to use this as a pattern for my jacket because when I put it on, this is basically what I want, just as a quilt. So, um, I will just cut on the seams and then I can make pattern out of it. So. The only thing is, I probably don't want to have this type of the collar, so I will maybe just cut it well on that uh, bend and just leave a smaller collar. And I think, no, actually, I thought the sleeves would be too long, but actually, I like to have longer sleeves in my jacket, so I will leave it as is, or maybe maybe shorten it a little bit, so. Um, you know, you can still make adjustments when you make actually, you know, make the pieces. So we will go how it looks. But I think the length is good. It covers my bum bum. That's the very important thing for me, and it covers my belly as well. So uh, <laughs> it's got the right length in the right places. So this is going to be my pattern, and I'll be using these blocks uh, to go outside. Okay, so I cut the shirt uh, on the seams, and those are the old pieces I, I need for the pattern. Still got the collar as well. Uh, so basically, because that shirt was quite big on me when I put it on, uh, when it was you know originally sewn, I I will what I will do just to test a little bit of the pattern before I you know cut out the quilt to to make it. I will baste it back uh, to sew it together, and I won't be adding obviously any seam allowances to that to that. Uh, cut so I hope that when I sew it together with the seam allowance possibly um, half an inch that when I then put it on me it's going to be a better fit if not then I know I need to add a little bit of seam allowance when I um, start cutting from actual quilt okay so I'm stitching like I said that a shirt back to see uh, if the sizing will be right and I'm trying to get the sleeve in and look there's a big distance between, you know, cut out sleeve and where it's supposed to go. So I just need to remember that when I will be cutting front and back to leave more space here to go further up. And I probably what will do, I will attach the sleeve first and then I will kind of um, make that part fit it better. So uh, it's good to do those things, you know, before you start cutting the fabrics. Without putting the uh, sleeve in, I will just put what I've stitched on the side back uh, just to see whether now that uh, fitting on the side seams is better. Yes, the fit is much better now on the sides. I kind of did probably like, uh, well, good half an inch of the seam here uh, to put it all together so I could now, you know, uh, easily still close it here but I don't have that whip standing up on the back here like you know there was a big bug here and uh, I will cut the front and back you know with the line in it so I still gonna have a little bit of wiggle room here 
uh, depend on how I will decide to, to close that uh, jacket. I will just make a note of it, obviously about the, the armhole I was saying about. And also uh, about that, that when I cut, you know, the bottom I will do a little bit wider, just, just slightly, maybe like, yeah, probably half an inch on both sides. Okay, so our unpick what I've stitched together and I've got blocks ready to start putting the quilt sandwich now. So um, I won't be doing the three layers, I will just do two and then the lining will be separate. Okay, so I'll start with the sleeves because that's the smallest bit I will be working with. The other part is in one long piece, so you, you know, I'm gonna have to make a bigger piece of the coil to kind of go around it. Uh, I didn't cut uh, that on the arms here, I just left it in one piece. So um, let's start with the sleeve. So obviously I'll need to make two the same. So basically what I need to do first is kind of more or less put the blocks where I want them. And because they are wonky, um, it's quite easy to to do. So I'll take a bigger one actually, maybe here. Let's see if I go. So these ones are six and a half. This is eight and a half, and I also got a few uh, ten and a half inch uh, blocks, and I got lots of two and a half inch strips. So if I need to kind of add a little bit of fabric only somewhere, I will just put another uh, strip or, or two and a half inch or something like that. So uh, that's how I want to go about it. So this is how I'm going to stitch them together. So I will just stitch the rows first and then put them all together and that piece will be ready to be quilted and then I will make another one the same. Okay, so just quick update where I am at the moment. So I've stitched that back and front as a one piece. I folded it into half and obviously that's where the other side of the blanket will be to make it one whole piece. And I've got enough of the blocks to now cover it and that's what I will be doing basically. Uh, I will be adding so uh, this in the middle obviously because that will be both of the sides and I hope the next ten and a half inch blocks will cover the rest and you remember I said I want to have some extra bit here so I just need to make sure I've got enough and I think I'll, I'll be fine even if I you know account for the um, allowance for the stitching it's big enough so that means I need to have a three blocks across for this part around it uh, to kind of the shape so it's time now to put down my template okay I will pin it so it doesn't move when I'm going to cut around it and then I will fold the piece into half and the trace on the other side <laughs> added an inch at the bottom for, for the length, uh, uh, just to make it a bit longer. Um, like I said, I've added a little bit more here in the place where the sleeve is going to be, just to be able to match it up with the sleeve itself. same thing with my sleeves 
and then I will I think I will baste it just lightly to see how it uh, works and I'll show you how it looks as well okay so I basted my uh, jacket uh, with a very white stitch so I can quickly rip it off into pieces again so let's have a look what we've got here all right Okay, so sleeves are good length. I don't have to do anything about it. They went in nicely here as well. The collar, I think I would rather have not collar like this, just just like a you know small stand here. So I will make it smaller and reattach it back. Now I was thinking to put the um, lining for that quilt, but I actually quite like how. You know that fleece feels on me because I, I only got a short sleeve t-shirt here now and that's how I could wear it and it's kind of nice and warm inside so I think I won't be doing the lining quite like it actually it's quite nice and warm so um, I've stitched one side to the very end and the other side I left a little bit of opening here and I think that's how I will go about it here so I will just round I hope you can see it I will just round those edges here nicely because then it's not so tight here at the bottom again and that I like to you know have it nice and loose so that's one thing second thing um, when I put it apart again now I will finish off all of those uh, edges here with a bias tape uh, like ready-made bias tape I'm not be, not going to be making it myself I think I've got black and I've got blue so I think I'm I just going to audition which one looks better so when I then around those things here I will go all around here as well and to the top and uh, finish it off this way I just need to think about how to go about the um, the collar when I'm going to be finishing it off but I will show you that what I came up with uh, when I get to the machine and I want pockets so I need to have a tool uh, I think if I do six and a half inches and then just not make them you know square like this and go from the top I will just uh, make square and then cut that edge here to make the pockets going this way so it's actually nice and comfortable to put your head in all right so this is how it looks I was thinking what closing I want to have I was thinking about something else but actually because I've got a nice edge here I might just you know I might as well just put the buttonholes here and I've got some nice like random buttons you know the buttons can be different each each of one of them so I might just do that but you know let me see how it will looks when it's finished and then you know maybe some inspiration comes in about the uh, close out bits so I've put my jacket apart and before I start putting the um, bias tape all around I thought it would be good to add some um, uh, like a facing on the edge of the front because when I start doing the uh, buttonholes or things like that I would like to have a little bit more sturdy so I've got those white strips here which are long enough to go through whole length if you don't have you can obviously put some bits together uh, but I just I just want to quickly put it in so what I will do now I will literally just stitch it on on the very edge uh, just to hold it in place so um, when I go around with the uh, the, the tape, it, it's not going to be moving. I'll finish it from both sides uh, with the bias tape. It will look um, the same way. So that will be here. So that will kind of give a little bit of more sturdiness for the buttons to be sewn on and for the buttonholes to be made on the other side as well. Okay, so I went around with the um, bias tape. It's all ready to be put back together. Now the collar. Uh, so I've put the bias tape, uh, on the same side as well as the rest of the jacket and I will just literally put it where I want to go. This is the middle of the um, collar so it will be in the middle here because that's the middle of the back and I just stitch again on that blue um, bias tape here and that's how I will finish. I won't be I won't be you know worrying about anything else because it's nicely finish on this side as well, we just finish like that so I think it's fine here I've missed to catch up this one and, and I will just uh, 
fix it by hand. On this side it came quite nicely. Uh, but I won't be taking the stitches out, I'll just finish it by hand. Okay, so I've got uh, my uh, patches for pockets finished and they've been quilted and um, I did say before that I don't want the pockets to be just, you know, go straight from the top. I won't be able to put my hands, you know, like on the angle, it's more convenient. So this is more or less the, the shape we'll be looking for, for the uh, pockets. I will just uh, uh, pin it like this more or less, put it on the uh, on my jacket and just see how it feels and then I will adjust accordingly. To, to how I want it. Once I've got it all uh, mapped out, I will cut it uh, to have the straight edge here and I'll just go around with the bias tape like I did with the main uh, jacket and I will put it on. I do have a selection of buttons from different destinations and um, so I'm just thinking those buttons do not have to be even the same. It is scrappy project after all and I'm just looking through my big box what I've got here and if there's something I really like I could use for it I do have three of those blue ones which are quite nice uh, but I think I need more than three perhaps five maybe mix it with those ones oh okay I've got another one of those if I need six I could go with, with those two and then if I need more, I might need to mix it with those white instead. Well, I've got six of those whites as well, so depend how I kind of um, fill in with uh, how many I need. I've got some options here. I do have an automated pattern uh, hole maker on this machine, but the buttons I've chosen are too big for it, so I'm gonna have to make it manually which is fine though I've never done it before so that will be interesting experience so let's first start with marking where would I like my buttons go so I will first make a mark from the edge where I want the hole to finish so if I would like button to, to be in the middle of that um, facing I did so that's more or less where it's supposed to be so that's about three quarter of the inch the marker I'm using is the one you can um, take off with a bit of water you, kind of you you can barely see it here anyway so my buttons are quite big it's like almost one and a half inch oh, this one's yeah they are the same size more or less so I want to have a mixture of those well we'll start with first one here at the top So that will be my first buttonhole here and then I just need to kind of mark it how often do I want it so I think I've got about 24 inches of space here to put the buttons on so if I put one here and then every four inches let's have a look so that will work fine so that's what I will do every four inches I will mark a one and a half inch line and then I will use a very 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 small zigzag to go one side and then do another side okay before I start making holes in my jacket I'll just kind of test uh, how I can make those holes in a piece of scrap so let's mark whatever width I want or whatever like I want just for the test purpose so that's how I want the pattern hole to look like so, like I said, very, 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 very narrow and very close to each other zigzag. So I'm at the moment on the setting one and a half 
and I'm, I'm, I'm lining about what on the one side of the foot so see okay I think the size wise I might go a little bit bigger so let's try two yeah two is fine but a bit closer to each other I'm on zero four five this time between okay so the size wise I'm fine now just to measure how will I be able to do it so I'm going on the right, right and left side of the line I've made so I think I just need to do it like you know like I did crank the manually the handle now normally this point where you're finishing the buttonhole you will change the settings to go out on the kind of cover both of the sides so let me write down what settings I am at the moment so to make one side I'm on 2 and 0, 5 settings now I would like to go double so I'm just thinking if I go 4 no more five extend the wrong C yeah probably not because it's kind of it's centering it so I should I can probably go with five but what I will need to make sure that I will move where the stitch is going to go yeah that will be fine so yeah five but I'm gonna have to move a little bit there the food so then I'll go back to number two and again let's uh, let's crank the handle manually just to see if I'm in the right place I am okay and let's do that ending now I will center now to have both of them in the middle. Okay, so I think if I can do that, um, so this side is, is how I want it to finish. If I can do that on my jacket, I should be fine. I will start from the bottom one because if something goes wrong, that will be the least visible one. It doesn't look very bad actually you know I, once I cut it I really don't mind to go around it you know by hand again just to tidy it up so uh, I will do that if necessary but overall I think I'm good with this one so I will now finish it off so we have one done so for that I will need the my cutter which is in here then I will need two pins as well so what I will do I will put the pin at the one side where this hole starts come on here you go and then I will put the pin at the other side where the hole ends And then I can go in the middle and cut it and then you know that pin will stop the cut where I need it so it won't go beyond uh, it won't go beyond the, the holes uh, or the parameter of the hole here you go done So let's now see whether my button can go through it. Because if it doesn't, that's going to be a bummer, isn't it? It does. That's fine. So, like I said, I don't mind to kind of finish it off a little bit better by hand when I've got all of them done. 
but I know they are all nicely secured here already. So here we go. It would have been easier if my, um, you know, the button hole maker could take the size of those buttons, or you can choose smaller buttons. So it's up to you which way you go with it. But I like those buttons and I want to use them. So here we go. I just need to make five more. Okay, so all my button holes are done. So what I will do now is I will basically close it and will mark where I need to put the my buttons. So I will probably pin it so it doesn't move too much. And also I need to make sure that um, I will have it the same kind of distance from the edge here. Because obviously we don't want to have all of those buttons all around the place. So yeah, um, I will do that and I will so uh, the buttons on. I will use again my my water marker, water soluble marker, and I'll just do you know line in the middle, and then I know where the button needs to go. And there it is, my finished jacket. Just put it quickly on. I really really like how it came out. It's quite loose here because I only got a t-shirt on me. And to be fair, if there's nice weather, the t-shirt will be just the thing I'll be having. But there's enough room to put something else, you know, like a, maybe another jumper or something. So this is how it looks with the buttons. Got very comfortable pockets added. And a um, few comments for my next project. So, you know, as a first project and kind of, uh, you know, working muslin, it's good enough for me to wear it. I actually did wear it a few times to her school runs already. It's quite nice because you know of that uh, fleece inside makes it nice and comfortable. Uh, but uh, you know when I will make a next one and there will be a next one. So few comments. So I won't be worrying about making that uh, initial blanket to the shape of my pattern. I will just make a one big piece because I found a way of using up the scraps, which would be the. Uh, follow-up video uh, to this one. So I'll show you what I've made uh, out of it. Two, uh, the, the, those trimmings here, I didn't do it very nicely to be fair. I just wanted to quickly finish and have my jacket on me. So I will do it the way I would have done for the quilt. So uh, here I was sewing, you know, both sides at the same time, but I will take time to sew it on the right hand side and twist it around and perhaps uh, in the places where you can see it. Uh, finish it off by hand and where you cannot see you know inside or the inside seams I can again sew it by a uh, machine that's two uh, you know I've added this strip here as a as a facings but um, I will make it wider and I will make it out of the the, the jacket uh, fabric as well here so it will look quite nice um, facing for the sleeves so sleeves are good you know good length but sometimes you would like to maybe you know if it's a bit warmer or you're doing something you need to um, fold the uh, sleeves I would like to add the facing for the sleeves as well so it will look nice whether I've got it normal or I've got it uh, folded so it will look nice on here as well and um, because I've changed my mind about the, uh, adding the interfacing, obviously then I had a little bit of uh, problem putting the collar because I had to change the way I was planning to do it in the first place. And uh, I will probably add again a facings here to kind of uh, make it look a little bit better when I finished. But it, again, it's it's a wearable item. I, I have no problem with it. You know, I even added my. Uh, label and hook to hang it so it's all ready to be used and the, the last uh, thing I would definitely pick different color of the fleece so again because I was planning to put the um, lining then I didn't care what fleece is going inside next time I would choose the, the fleece in the color of whatever fabric I would choose to go on the outside so it would be nice or, or contrast but not not the probably not the beige one <laughs> maybe blue or red whatever the other color I would like to um, use it uh, with. Okay. So, uh, like I said, there will be bonus project which um, I will publish uh, probably next week. And um, if you like this project, please give me a thumbs up. 
uh, hopefully you will choose to subscribe and um, leave comments you know if you liked it you didn't like it or you, you've got some questions please leave comments and I'll be happy to reply uh, for, for more projects you can uh, you know pop in on my uh, Facebook page or Instagram so this is it my first quilted jacket Thanks for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel to support my work. For further inspiration and examples of my work, you can check my Instagram or Facebook page. Happy creating!